Well, welcome to On The Way. I'm Pastor Kevin, and I'm here with Pastor Jeff. And Pastor Jeff, we've got a couple of guests today yeah, in our we studio. Do. We do. We've got some great uh, great guys here joining us from the church. Uh, we've got, you want to introduce them right Sure. Now? Go right ahead, man. Okay. Well, we've got Pat Banks over here. And uh, Pat's joining us. We'll tell you and, why in just a few minutes. And, and Pat is a retired airline pilot. Pat, right, you used yeah. to fly the big planes, right? Big ones, big ones across the ocean. Across the pond, as he used to say, <laughs> Pastor Jeff. Yeah, and, yeah. And and our, uh, and our other guest is our uh, our legal department. Uh, this is, <laughs> is this uh, it? Is you're this it, man. That's all you got. You're it. You're it. This is <laughs> this is Dave Spiegel. Uh, he's one. Of, he's been a deacon in our church, and he is a, a connect group leader in our church, and uh, a lawyer in the community. So we're just delighted to have you guys with us today. So we're so glad you're uh, joining us today, however and wherever you are watching or listening. We're so glad you are tuned in today. Well, now, Pastor Jeff, it's October. I know. And you know what I'm excited about today? Uh, well, it's uh, this is airing on the radio on October the 2nd. Exactly. So, so what is it that you're October about today? the 2nd, a lot of people don't know this. <laughs> it is actually, you know, you go to the like Kroger or Walmart, you yeah. get your produce and right. there's those sprayers that keep it fresh. Oh, I hate those things. They scare me to death. Today come on, spray me. is National uh, Produce Sprayer Day. <laughs> it is a great day. And that is that that's probably not why we're doing this podcast. That, that is not why we're doing this podcast. Today is also another special day. And uh, today is uh, we are celebrating at our church, Pastor Kevin, your 25th anniversary as the pastor of Fincastle Baptist Church. Yeah, it's hard to believe, isn't it? I, I mean, know. I you know don't they, look a day over 60. I it's, know. It's they, really oh, man. hard to oh, believe. Man. That hurts, Pastor Jeff. That hurts. Oh, I'm yeah. sorry. I love you. you, I, love know, you. That, I mean, I must have been 10 when they hired yeah, me. Yeah, it must have been. <laughs> so, so 1997 yes. uh, is when you came on uh, as the pastor of, of Fincastle Baptist Church. And you things know, were much different. In those they days. were, yeah. And that's why we've yeah. asked these two guys to join us because right. these are two of the families. There are very few families. Mm -hmm. uh, I look forward to asking today uh, in our service how many people were actually attending the church in 1997 when yeah. I became the pastor. And it, it is a very, very small number. <laughs> the average attendance on that day, I still remember, uh, was about 50 people. Right, yeah. And so Pat was actually one of the folks on the search committee. Uh, you know, Baptists have uh. a pastor search committee when they need to find a pastor. So if you're looking for someone to blame, <laughs> this is your guy. <laughs> and David was uh, a deacon and right. uh, a member yeah. at the church. And, uh, it, you know, it's just really neat to see all of the years and all mm. of the memories that, quite frankly, the three of us have been through together. And it yeah. was your your idea for us to kind of yeah, take absolutely. a break in our series on the way here right. and maybe talk about a little bit about some of those memories. Well, tell us, I mean, we all, re well, some of us remember 1997 well. I was in the seventh grade. I don't remember a oh, lot of it. On. Oh, you know, Don't lay that I on mean, the seventh grade. Seventh grade. <laughs> I'm just saying. But I need some wisdom from you, gentlemen. Uh, tell us what what was life like in 1997. I mean, I know it, gas was probably not nearly three plus dollars a gallon. And, and uh, no, no, it wasn't, <laughs> Pastor Jeff. Uh, I, I, I googled gas was a dollar twenty two. Oh, those were the days, weren't they? And, and a loaf of bread <laughs> was a dollar seventeen, mm. and a gallon of milk was a dollar ninety. Goodness, a gallon and, of milk now is what, like four dollars something. Yeah, we don't drink shop. milk in our in our house. Was we're all and we had to drive a little further to buy that allergic. gallon of milk. I was gonna right? say, in Fincastle, there was no Dollar General. There was no, in Fin Castle, <laughs> there was no Dollar true, General. Yeah. There was no Kroger. No at that Kroger. Time. That's right. I guess no that's true. That time, Botetourt yeah. has has come up a lot. Botetourt County has mm -hmm. has developed a lot in one those stop years. Light. There was yep. one stoplight. Mm -hmm. yeah. Was two twenty the four lane that it is now? Yeah, or yeah. it was well, yeah. okay, yeah. okay, okay. Well, so some other things about ninety seven. Uh, just tell us, you know, where was the church meeting? What were what were we? What was it like in those early days? We were still at the old building uh, in Fincastle. Downtown, Beach. yeah, downtown and, uh, Fincastle. Fifty to seventy, you know, hundred on a really good day. <laughs> Uh, parking was really not an issue. We had a small parking lot because the church had bought the cabin behind the uh, the old church building. Okay. So that provided some parking. Yeah, if you've ever been to in, in the heart of Fincastle, 
Uh, my first office was, as you mentioned, a log cabin, which was built. Uh, there was a sign there. I think it was in the 1700s, right. like 1781 yeah. or something. Mm, wow. And uh, it, it, that was the office. And then upstairs of the office, David, I remember you taught youth group at yeah, that time, at which was, group. you know, maybe – Five, six kids. You yeah, know? it was five or six kids, but I was still worried about coming through the floor. You know, to the, to the <laughs> <laughs> Lots of noises. Lots of, a lot of noises, a lot of creaking. Yeah. And and the church, as Pat, as you mentioned, I remember our first Sunday, uh, everybody show up to meet the new pastor guy. You know, this mm-hmm. is not the average attendance. And uh, I still remember it. There were 70 people on mm-hmm. that day. Wow. And then, you know, the next Sunday, Pastor Jeff was back to. You know, the normal attendance, as Pat mentioned, yeah. about 50. And, you know, sure. uh, you know, I, I, I remember, you know, um, you know, thinking that I had left as a, an associate pastor of a church and yeah. come, and I had taught an adult Saint school class that had more people in it than the uh-huh. entire <laughs> church at at Ben Castle. Yeah. It was quite an wow. adjustment. Um, well, let's, let's go back and get kind of the story of how you came hmm. to – to Finn Castle Baptist Church. Uh, so you're a graduate of Liberty University. And just talk to us a little bit about how, like, from the when you left Liberty, how did you end up at Finn Castle? Yeah, uh, you know, we gradu- I graduated from Liberty. Terry and I uh, was a student pastor in uh, a suburb of Philadelphia, Pennsylvania. We were there four and a half years. Our son came along. Uh, four and a half years in, the senior pastor there retired, right? and I kind of felt like the Lord wanted me to do more than maybe just be the student pastor, maybe take another step, and and so I took an associate pastor job in Ocean City, New Jersey, and we were there for four and a half years, and um, our daughter had come along, and life was good. We lived three miles from the beach. We just built a house on the end of a cul-de-sac. The church was growing tremendously, and uh, July of 1997, mm. the phone rang, and the guy on the other end of the phone, I don't think it was actually well, you, Pat, me. had said, uh, I'm chairperson of the search committee of Fincastle Baptist Church in Fincastle, Virginia, and the first question <laughs> I asked him is, where in the world is Fincastle, Virginia? Yeah, exactly. Uh, you know, because uh, I knew Lynchburg, and knew Roanoke, and, right. uh, and second question I asked him is, you know, how how'd you get my name? Who do you know that I know? And right, he said, well, yeah. somebody at Liberty had given us your name. And so that began the process. And make a long story very short, uh, that was July. First person that looked at our house, bought it the first day it was for sale mm-hmm. in a depressed housing market. Okay, yeah, God, I, yeah. I got the point. I'll move to Virginia. <laughs> and so that led us to October 1st, 1997 wow. was our first day uh, here yeah. at Fincastle Baptist. And uh you know, I remember my wife Terry started. You know, Fincastle is kind of known for its uh, its kids club and its right. youth ministries. Yeah. And I yeah. remember my wife Terry and Dave's wife Leslie <laughs> started what we now call wow. kids club. Wow! And um, <laughs> and I still remember. I tell people I still remember the days when Terry would teach uh, uh, children's church, and we would make six copies of the lesson. Right. <laughs> and uh, I have two kids. Mm. Dave, how many kids do you have? I've got three. And so we always said, you do the math. <laughs> you know, <laughs> right, and, and there right. were some other kids that started coming, and the and church started the to grow. And now the kids' club and kids' church will run over uh, up to 100-plus kids mm. uh, every single Sunday and Wednesday. Yeah. So it is, it is definitely... Yeah, across both our quite campuses, you know, sometimes sure. it's more than 150 to 200. And so, yeah, yeah to see yeah. what God's done wow. these 25 years. That's but, great. Uh, and we're, we're up against a break here, so we're going to talk more about this as we come back from the break. But I want to just kind of prep your thoughts. We're going to start talking about kind of the early days of the church. What was that like? So when we come back from this break, we will dive into that a little more. Have you been enjoying On the Way with Pastor Kevin and Pastor Jeff? If so, then feel free to check us out wherever you listen to your podcast for more episodes. For any more information, please check out our website at www.fincastlebaptist.org slash OTW, or you can send us an email at OTW at fincastlebaptist.org. That's OTW at fincastlebaptist.org. Now back to On the Way with Pastor Kevin and Pastor Jeff. Well, welcome back to On The Way. I'm Pastor Jeff here with Pastor Kevin and two of our guests, Pat Banks and Dave Spiegel. Today, we are celebrating 25 years of Pastor Kevin, uh, of your leadership here at Fincastle Baptist Church. 
And we kind of spent the first session kind of talking about how you came here, kind of the things that were different. But I kind of want to dive into, um, you know, it's great that we have you two gentlemen with us today because you each of you brings a different perspective to mm. Pastor Kevin coming. Good. He has a perspective. You've got one from a search committee angle, and you have one from just a, a lay leader in the church and, and a member of the church uh, at that time. And so I'm excited to see, you know, what let's start with you, Dave, kind of. Give us a give us a take of what was the climate like at Fincastle Baptist Church in '97 when Pastor Kevin came. Maybe before he yeah. came, and then what did he bring into the mix well, there? Well, um, we had a really uh, nice guy, good good pastor. We uh, had joined the church. As a matter of fact, I was baptized. Uh, by the former pastor <laughs> on the same day that he announced he was leaving. I don't know what I did. <laughs> wow. I did something to make somebody mad. Oh, my goodness. So he, he left, and uh, there was a period of transition right. there yeah. where we had uh, uh, people coming in to fill the pulpit. That was a quite difficult time because, mm. uh, one, the first uh, individual who filled the pulpit – uh, was did did not uh, believe in the inerrancy of the Bible, and oh, that gosh. created a lot of conflict. And looking yeah, back sure. on it, it coalesced things in the minds of a lot of people, including me, about uh, what we believe. Mm. And uh, it was really helpful yeah. in in the long run to just kind of get people focused really on what. A pastor should be about sure, because, sure. Yeah, sometimes uh, it's 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 just as important to learn what not to do or what right. not to look for mm-hmm. as it is to look for to know what to look for. Yep, that's right. So there was uh, mm-hmm. different uh, pastors, and some some of them that supplied were were great. Yeah, the second guy was really good. Yeah, yeah, yeah he he was. And then <clears throat> I can remember the day that Kevin came and preached. His first uh, sermon, and then right after the sermon, everyone voted on it. And I'm like, okay, what in the world are these guys, these search guys, doing? They're bringing somebody from Philadelphia. What? what? Come on, guys. What, what are you thinking about? Yeah, Kevin from a pastor's in. perspective, you know, no pressure, but you get one sermon. You got one, one shot. You brother. better, you better pull well, out the silver a bullet, buddy. Very good sermon. I can still remember what passage he preached out of. If I'm oh, not yeah? mistaken, I think it was First Peter okay. about uh, trials. And oh. you know, consider it pure joy that we're, we're going through these things. That wasn't meant as any prophecy, Kevin, right. but uh, it was a very good okay. sermon. I was like, okay, he's got my vote. Uh, I'll, I'll, <clears throat> I'll, I'll certainly support him. So that was really when he first came, and I don't yeah. know if you want to yeah. continue on. Well, I want to get but. Pat's perspective on that as a as a search committee member. I mean, there's there's significant pressure involved in that because you kind of are are tasked with the responsibility of finding the next guy right, right. that God has ordained for that mm-hmm. church and and you know we it don't took really us a while. yeah it took we, us a while. you got to know the mind of God I, <laughs> right? well, and so, I, I certainly don't but uh, well, no, no. we uh, <clears throat> I was corresponding secretary so I got to see all the resumes okay I think they came to the lead first and uh or the the chair and yeah. then I got them and it was quite a variety of mm. the just the, the presence the, the the visual aspect of these these resumes, yeah. some were very professionally done. Yeah. And this was kind of in the early days of personal computers. Not everybody right. had a okay. – many of them were on a typewriter, complete oh, with wow. whiteout. And we kind of set those off to the side. This right. is the kind of guy we're looking for. <laughs> uh, but we had several. We had so many. I can't remember how many, but we had several. Gotcha. And we, we actually were very interested in one of the local pastors. Yeah. Okay. And we kind of unofficially extended an invitation to him. He was wise enough to turn us down. Okay. He needed more, okay. more schooling, more seminary. Gotcha. Yeah. Uh, he was wiser than than we at that time. Mm. Uh, we went to see two or three, uh, maybe four other pastors in mm. various parts of the state, and I think up in West Virginia as well. Some were good, some weren't even close. Yeah. And we kind of <laughs> said, you know, we're, we're at we're at a, a loss here, and uh, yeah, and then yeah. then we got Kevin's resume. So. Okay, okay. And then and then you came in. You preached this amazing message. <laughs> I guess obviously because they called you on the spot after yeah, the vote. I yeah. mean, I don't know what the vote results yeah, were, but yeah. they obviously they I, extended I an invitation yeah. to you or called to you. 
Tell us about those early days of the church. I'm sure that you came into a situation of a, of a church that's several, now it's several hundred years old. Yeah. And uh, I would imagine those some people are kind of set in their ways. And <laughs> it was a, it was an ever changing community as sure. well. You know, there there's still to this day there's a a group of folks I think that want to be the last person that moves into Botata County. Sure. You know, it, it, there, there's still a mm-hmm. that a little bit in our in our area mm-hmm. where people you know they want to move here and they want it to be just like it was when they moved here. And you know, I as you as we said earlier, well, you know, when when I moved here, you know, there there was one red light between here and four sixty, and there was yeah. there wasn't a Kroger, there wasn't you know the convenience that we have now, and so you had that dynamic. And then secondly, as Dave touched on, you had the uh, theological dynamic, right. where the church itself was trying to figure out what it believed, right. and it was part of the. Um, the, the influence of uh, <clears throat> one of the previous interim pastors mm-hmm. who had kind of, you know, as Dave said, you know, wasn't, didn't believe the inerrancy of Scripture, didn't believe in the inspiration of the Bible, and, you know, that had had an influence in the church. And then in the third thing you had is in 1907, uh, 1997, you had the cultural changes mm-hmm. that our nation was going through. And so you had all those three factors to go. And then the fourth factor you had is you had a 29-year-old guy, Uh because I was 29 uh, at that point, with his first senior pastorate. Wow. And, you know, a guy from Louisiana, not from Philadelphia. Don't do that to me, baby. That's what it said on the resume. (laughs) But that's where I'd I'd served. You know, graduated Liberty again, served in Philadelphia and New Jersey. And... uh, you know, trying to figure out, you know, how to be a senior pastor. Mm. You had all those dynamics playing. And so the first two years was difficult. It was a lot of conflict in the church. Mm -hmm. Uh, Mm. And and then you also had, you know, a lot of folks that were set in their ways, as you said, Pastor Jeff, and, you know, maybe they didn't like to change whatever it is the change was. Mm. Um, Yeah, that's when when we were in the interim pastor situation. Right. For a year, maybe two years, I can't remember. The only way to keep the church going was with volunteers. Yeah, and right. and everybody, most people stepped up, yes. and they they had a pride of ownership in their own ministry, right. whether it was whatever. And when Kevin came in and took leadership, <clears throat> there were some hurt feelings because hey, yeah. that that's my job. They that's felt not a little your threatened. job. Yes, yes, yeah. yes, yes. Yeah. So you had that, yeah. and then on the other side, you had some people that were hired because they had been leading for two years and i remember like within my first month several committee chairs resigned (laughs) (laughs) because i'm tired and we got you now so now you can kind of do it (laughs) and so you had all that dynamic going and uh you know it's difficult days in the beginning people don't understand the price that was paid Mm. and uh but i like to say that finkhouse baptist church has been around since 18 uh, 31. 31. Wow. 1831. Wow. So we stand on the shoulders yeah. of those yeah. who have come before us yeah. and for generations and decades and decades and decades, faithful people have stood and preached the good news of Jesus mm. so people could be on the way to heaven. And that's yeah. our main desire is that people are on the way to heaven. And I know after this short break, we'll come back and continue our discussion. We'll be right back after this break. You've been listening to On the Way with Pastor Kevin and Pastor Jeff. We'd love to invite you to Fincastle Baptist Highlands Campus. We are excited for you to join our church family. With programs and events for men, women, kids, youth, and the general church, you are sure to find a place to belong and feel connected to our community. On Sundays at 9.30 a.m., We have connect groups where you can study the Bible and share life experiences. Then at 1045 a.m., join us for our in-person service with live worship and a message from one of our pastors. If you have kids, we've got you covered. Your children can join us for a biblical time of lessons. Kids Church happens at the same time as our main services, so both you and your child can hear the Word of God. Our youth don't get left out on Sundays either. On Sunday evenings at 6 p.m., Fancastle Students Ignite happens. This is a great time of fellowship, games, and study in God's Word. There are a lot more events happening at Fincastle Baptist, and for more information, visit us at www.fincastlebaptist.org highlands. Now, back to On the Way with Pastor Kevin and Pastor Jeff. 
Welcome back again to On The Way. Pastor Jeff here with uh, Dave Spiegel, Pat Banks, and of course, Pastor Kevin. And we are talking about the early days of Fincastle Baptist Church. Uh, and Pastor Kevin, you came to be the pastor here in 1997. That's 25 years ago, yesterday, actually, October the 1st. And today we're celebrating in October the 2nd. Um, but I know that in those early days, you mentioned there were battles that were fought. And, and I just, you know, to be quite honest, I am very grateful to have come into this ministry having ridden on the shoulders of you that have, have actually fought some of these battles so that I don't have to fight them. It's, it's, it, we can now move forward. You've created, and God through you has created, I think, in this church. And you guys help me uh, if I'm wrong, but let me know. But I think you've created a, a culture here that is, is very adept at changing. We're very, very quickly, we can change quickly. And it's unusual to see that in a church these days. And it hasn't always been that way. I know it hasn't <laughs> been that way. And I'm sure during that time, it must have been discouraging. Yeah, there's definitely scars. You know what I mean? Uh, there, right. There's price was paid. <laughs> battle but, scars. Uh, yeah. Battle scars. <laughs> but, uh, you know, in the real early days, I remember I was sitting in my office in that log cabin one day and uh, about two years in. And I, I distinctly remember this day. I'll never forget as long as I live. And I'm thinking, you know, God, maybe, man, maybe I made a mistake. Mm. Maybe, you know. I, and I remember looking up at my wall, and I had my diplomas hanging on my wall in those days. You know, I was right. young, trying to tell everybody how smart I was. And, and I thought, you know, <laughs> I am employable. You know, I'm not the best pastor in the world, but I can get a job. And, and right. I mean, it was difficult. I mean, to the point of I got death threats, to the point of wow. my kids got death threats, to, you know, really difficult days. And um, I remember an area pastor from Roanoke, he's in heaven now, uh, he came by, and I still remember it. He gave me the, the hang in there boy speech. Uh, mm. He was in his upper 60s at that point, and he said, people in central Botox County have been praying for years there would be a work of God <laughs> and you're it suck it up Wow! and <laughs> I went home and told Terry that day what had happened and it just changed my whole perspective I mean yeah. I get chills this day thinking about it wow. I don't know if you guys even knew that and um, and so I think back to those days, the price has been paid. But, you know, since then, man, the church started growing. We yeah, we, we, yeah. we did a tent crusade in downtown mm -hmm. Fincastle. You remember those that days? Was one, and of the, one of the funnest things that's ever gone on around here. <laughs> <laughs> big tent. Big yeah. tent. Yeah. We big set tent. a big tent up. We brought in sawdust, <laughs> brought in an evangelist, wow. prayed for 200 people to show up. And first night, 436 people showed up. Oh, a little which faith. Is crazy, you know. And, and that, that, that week, like 45 people got <laughs> saved. It totally wow. cha changed the whole direction of the church. Uh, we started really emphasizing our kids' ministry, youth mm -hmm. ministry, uh, big time, to the point where we had to reinforce the floor. Do you all remember that? The kids' club <laughs> would do their opening, the, and the whole floor in the, in the, in the worship center would, right. would shake. We had to actually re redo the floor. Um, uh, we rented every building in town we could find uh, <laughs> yeah. what is now the wedding venue across the street from the old church, including the volunteer fire department. Mm -hmm. Any building mm -hmm. that was for rent, we rented it for our children and youth ministry. Yeah, because if you've ever been downtown Fincastle, there's not much space. There's not no. much space. The church, the old church is still there. You can drive yeah. by and see it, uh, and there is literally no space around it whatsoever. Yeah. And so we, the <laughs> yeah. church had grown to about 300 on Sunday morning. Multiple wow. services. We owned 12 parking places, and the <laughs> building sat about 125 to 150 people if you really like the person sitting next mm -hmm. to you. Right. And so we started looking for land, relocated the church. That's a whole new story. Took a couple years to develop the land, built the building here, yeah. built another phase, built another phase, then became you know a multi-site church with the gift right. of the Highlands yeah. Campus. Yeah. And so, you know, the, the history of the church has been pretty quick and amazing to see the growth. But I think it all goes back to that commitment mm. to the gospel, the commitment to making sure people are on the way uh, to mm. heaven. And I think one of the things that, uh, that stands out to me about Fincastle is that there, we have a mission statement. Mm. You know, back in, back before mission statements were popular, <laughs> yeah. you kind of you kind of asked the church, you know, why do we exist? Why are we here? 
Talk about that a little bit. Yeah, and, and nobody <laughs> kind of, you know, we get generic answers. My favorite was because we always have, you know, right. we were always been here. <laughs> and, you know, in 1997, mission statements weren't a thing. And so I, I, as I tell the story at the new members class, we uh, we canceled every adult science school class we have. Now, there were only two, but it sounds better, Dave, right. when you yeah. say every adult science yeah. school class. <laughs> and for 13 weeks, we figured out, you know, study the Great Commission, the Great Commandment. And, and I think during those days, and then the other thing, Jeff, I think that made a difference is guys like these two men yeah, yeah that not only you know was there a price paid sure you know on my behalf but there was a price paid on their behalf and they believed in and supported a young pastor who you know you think i'm bad now you should have seen me 25 years ago you know i mean <laughs> without experience yeah yeah, yeah no yeah, experience yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah didn't know anything stepped on his toes a few times made a bunch oh, yeah. of bad yeah. mistakes you know oh. as any new pastor would just you yeah. know just things i look back on and and you know in those days we had cassette tapes right and I, you know, the other day I was looking, you know, <laughs> listening to some of those old sermons, on, and I thought, oh my goodness, those, they're the most patient people in the world. Wait, uh, hold, you on, know. hold on. You were listening to some of your old sermons, old on, sermons cassette on cassette tape. Yes. Wow. Uh, yeah, I still have a. You have no, a cassette player. Cassette. Yeah. Oh, yeah. yeah, 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 yeah. yeah. Tape. yeah. <laughs> I'm a record guy. I love all the records. You know, so give me the I vinyl. Think, but. <laughs> I think at what happened is that, and then God provided some of the key leaders in our church. Hmm. I think of people like John and Melba Burleson mm. that joined two months after I became yeah. the pastor. Right. Okay. Yeah. I think of key people that are now in leadership position. I think Eddie Goad was one of think those. Think of Eddie Goad, who our chairman yeah. of deacons now. I mean, you know, just God provided people. I mean, I just I tear up when I think about it. But it goes back. That's why we ask these two men to come. Right. Because, I mean, we've been through a lot together. Yeah. You know, there, yeah. there, there has been a total change what Finn Castle Baptist well, is and, today. And, you know, uh, when you're talking about change, Kevin, there's another group of people out there that always were so encouraged. I mean, encouraging, I'm sure, to you, mm-hmm. but uh, it was just great to still see them as the church went through these changes mm-hmm. of music and location yeah. and style, which were kind of not the substantive things that we need to be concerned about, but they're, they're important. But the older members of the church who yes. supported you mm-hmm. and oh. hung in there when uh, the way they had done church for years and years was totally, totally right. kind of reworked. Mm-hmm. Oh, no doubt. And I mean, just people, kind of just solid. Oh. Yeah. People, even if they, even though they didn't agree with didn't all agree. Of them. Yes. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Didn't agree. Yeah. I, I distinctly remember multiple of them saying, you know, Pastor Kevin, it's it's not the music I want, but I understand. I want my grandkids to be in church. That's right. I want that neighbor kid down the street to be in church, and I understand why we're doing it, and I'm willing to sacrifice what I want for the sake of the gospel. Yep. Well, that, I mean, when I tell those stories that yeah. most of those folks have passed away yep. by now and have done their funeral, mm. it is powerful to think of that. And what a what a challenge to those of yeah, us today sure. that, you know, are, are you know, life constantly changes. Yeah. And, yeah. and you know, Jesus said, unless you change, you'll mm-hmm. never see the kingdom of heaven. No, obviously he's talking about repentance. He's talking right, about sure. salvation. <clears throat> yeah, uh, well, I mean, one of the things that I think is has been a hallmark of Fincastle Baptist Church is its mission consistency. Mm-hmm. And it started in those early days when you developed that, that, uh, that mission statement. Mm-hmm. We exist to help others know God, grow in God, and live for God. And it has continued for 25 years since you started. And I just want to say, 1 Corinthians chapter 4, verse 2 says that it's required that managers be found faithful. Mm-hmm. And I want to commend you. I know these guys do too. Uh, just on 25 years of faithful service, you know, um, God has done a lot through you, and, and there is a lot left to be done. Jesus said, I will build my church, yeah, but he uses people to do it. And so I'm grateful to you. I know there's there are thousands of people in our church, hundreds of people in our church that are grateful to you because of the impact that you have had through your willingness to serve and your willingness to be used by God. And and uh, if we can help you 
our listener in any way, we want you to reach out to us. We've got an email coming at the end of this podcast and this broadcast. And uh, I want to say thank you to David and uh, to Pat for being here today. Yeah, I definitely uh, want to publicly thank these guys for their support over their year, mm-hmm. over the years, their commitment, them, their wives, their families. It's been great to see what Jesus has done in their life individually yeah. as they've grown in their own faith and uh, how God has used them. Uh, you know, I, I, I just, I count them as dear friends and I'm grateful, uh, for what Jesus has done. And as pastor Jeff says, we call this on the way because we're all on the way somewhere. Mm-hmm. And Jesus said, I am the way. That's and right. of all the places you go today, we hope that you will be on the way to heaven one day. You've been listening to on the way with pastor Kevin and pastor Jeff. Do you have a question for the pastors? Feel free to email us at otw at fincastlebaptist.org. To listen to more On The Way, visit fincastlebaptist.org slash on the way. Or subscribe wherever you listen to podcasts. Thanks for joining us while you are on the way.